Welcome back. Great to see you again, and if you're new here and enjoy in-depth nerd specs and speculation strap in, we're taking another look at the Quest 3 and the morsels of new info they seem to be intentionally putting out there for us. Mark Zuckerberg did a podcast with Lex Friedman. I recommend listening to the whole thing, and it's about two hours long. However, if you don't have the time and just want to know about the Quest 3 bits they talked about, I got you. I got a chance to look at the Quest 3 headset, and it is amazing. Give some more details in the fall. Maybe release in the fall. When is it getting released again? I forgot you, you mentioned it. To we'll me. give more details at Connect, okay. but but it's coming it's coming this fall. So Lex was definitely told the release date, and Mark had to stop him before he said anything he shouldn't have. What do you reckon? Released at Connect or just after? <laughs> so uh, it's uh, priced at uh, four ninety nine. There are basically two big new things that we've added to Quest Three over Quest Two. The first is high resolution mixed reality. It has done so well. I have to say, as a person who experienced it today with zombies, <laughs> having a full awareness of the environment and integrating that environment in the way they run at you while they try to kill you. So it's, it's, uh, it's just the, the mixed reality, the pass through is really, really, really well done. Uh, and the fact that it's only $500 is really it's, uh, well done. High praise here regarding the pass through. From what we're hearing, I, th I think it's had a serious boost. Thank you. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I mean, our. I mean, we put a lot of work into making the device both as good as possible and as affordable as possible. So we're not just trying to serve you know, an elite, a wealthy crowd. We we want to. We, we really want this to be accessible. So we needed to basically deliver something that works really well, but in an, an affordable package. And we started with Quest Pro last year. It was um, it's it's it was fifteen hundred dollars. Now we've we've lowered the price to a thousand. But in a lot of ways, the mixed reality in Quest Three is even better and more advanced level than what we were able to deliver in Quest Pro. So Quest 3 has an even better pass-through. It's not in a lot of ways it's better, it's just straight up the best pass-through they've ever put in a headset that they've released. The depth sensor being included is huge, and we did have leaks covering the Auto Guardian stuff. Huge thanks again to Luna for bringing this to our attention. Follow them on Twitter. So this isn't just aiding the pass-through stability, but also providing a more frictionless experience. Quest 3 has two 4 megapixel RGB colour cameras. The Quest Pro only had one, so you're actually seeing through two black and white cameras, and the software was actually colorizing them using data from the color camera which is why it still looked a little wonky and you could see some black and white pop in here and there Nerd Zone. so how does the quest 3 stack up you want some actual numbers well 4 megapixels is the big number confirmed here this is 4 million pixels 1080p 1920 by 1080 in a typical aspect ratio is just over 2 million pixels 4k 3840 by 2160 typical aspect ratio is just shy of 8.3 million pixels now the aspect ratios for vr displays or each eye don't conform to typical cinema aspect ratios they're more square but in terms of resolution we still should get an idea of 4 million pixels being sat perfectly between 1080p and 4k most commonly known as 1440p 2560 by 1440 in typical aspect ratios so these are two pretty high quality pass-through cameras we have confirmed marketing numbers for being 10 times the resolution of the quest 2 cameras looking at the quest pro page those cameras are apparently four times the resolution of the quest 2 cameras so if i put my maths hat on that means quest 3 pass-through cameras are 2.5 times the resolution of the quest pro cameras that's massive it really seems like they've actually been downplaying the difference quest 3 pass-through will be heads and shoulders above any of their other products lex's reaction to his experience says it all yeah it it, it, it it's really it's a really compelling experience. I mean, VR is really interesting too, but this is something else almost. This is this becomes yeah. integrated into your life, into your world. Well, the headset's already smaller than the, the previous version. Oh yeah, so it's forty percent thinner. And the other thing that I think is good about it, it's yeah. So mixed reality was the first big thing. The second is it's just a great VR headset. It's I mean, it's got two x the graphics processing power, forty percent sharper screens, forty percent thinner, more comfortable, better strap architecture, all this stuff that you know. If you liked Quest Two, I think that this is just going to be. You know, it's like all this, all the content that you might have played in Quest Two is just going to be sharper automatically and, and look better in this. So it's, um, I, I think people are really going to like it. Yeah. So this fall. <laughs> this fall. So that was fun to find, but what else? Well, let's compare some of the marketing spiel on the Quest Pro page to what Mark just said about Quest 3's display. Nerd Zone. So for Quest 2 to Quest Pro on optics, it's 42% slimmer, which is just like Quest 3. So we're very likely using the same pancake optics and not cheaper versions like I was fearing. But pixel density, pixels per inch, is 37% higher on Quest Pro. Mark said the Quest 3 was 40% sharper. Is that pixel density, pixels per inch? Or is it, and this will be insane, but highly unlikely, PPD, pixels per degree. Quest 2 is 21 pixels per degree, so Quest would be 29.4 at the additional 40% number. As we know, they apparently have a similar FOV. 
Either way, we know it pips Quest Pro slightly on sharpness by a 3% boost over Quest Pro versus Quest 2, so it's minimal, but it will be sharper than the Quest Pro. It's also clear the ecosystem they're building will have seamless backwards compatibility, and not just playing them like they were, but developers who put the work in can not only up-res, but increase draw distance and texture quality. We'll hear more on this a little later. I have to ask, Apple just announced a mixed reality headset called Vision Pro for $3,500. What do you think about this headset? And that's where we stop. I was going to include all of Mark's Apple Vision Pro thoughts, which are insightful, measured, and in my opinion, pretty spot on, but you should go watch the full video. I'll link in the description below. So what next? Well, Boz also did a podcast. If you haven't listened to Andrew Bosworth's Boz to the Future podcast, I highly recommend it. He did a great episode of Pharma Reality Labs consulting CTO, John Carmack, which was great. But the latest one is with Jason Rubin, co-founder of Naughty Dog, now VP of Metaverse Experiences at Meta. And they spoke a little about the Quest 3, but first, just a quick reminder to like and subscribe. I'm on the cusp of becoming a and making it there would let me do this way more easily. So I'd really appreciate your help. Quest 3 just announced a virtual and mixed reality standalone device coming later this year, starting at 499 for the 12, 128 gigabyte version uh, with bigger storage options coming. Now he's going through the announced information and this is a huge leap, but I thought I'd point it out. He mentions the announced storage option, but he starts saying 12. Starting at 499 for the 12, 128 gigabyte version for the 12, 128 gigabyte. <laughs> before stopping and resetting to say 128, referring to the gigabyte of storage. This could be an innocent reading or remembering mistake, or, and this is super wishful thinking, he could have nearly mentioned 12 gigabyte of RAM, as we still don't know the RAM number of the Quest 3. That would make it the same as the Quest Pro and Vive XR Elite, which both also have 12 gigabyte of RAM. The Pico 4 has eight gigabyte and the Quest 2 has six gigabyte. So to me, it's like they really should be beating Pico 4 on RAM. And I'm hoping that wasn't an honest mistake and a potential info slip that we caught instead. Anyway. It is backward compatible with Quest 2's library. Um, which people are excited to get access to. Talk more about this new headset. What does it mean for developers? Yeah, I mean, I've been using it now almost exclusively. Once you put it on your head, you realize like, these are the screens <laughs> you wanted. This is the form factor you wanted. This is the, you know, the thickness yeah. you wanted. It just, it's, it's like, it's a beautiful device. It really is a beautiful device, um, but a backward compatible device, yeah, which right. is very important. I think for the next year, it's not like you're throwing money into a into a pit that comes with you. You can still use your apps; they'll just you know up res and look better. Um, and it has uh, you know meta reality capabilities, which is that's right, incredibly awesome and totally new and different. You've experienced pass through, uh, maybe on Quest Two, where you can see. A black and white version of the background but this is this is really the next level of that and i think a big part of the future uh you know of, of the reality devices that we're building yeah even going from quest pro which uh, you know I, I love my quest pro the meta reality on uh, quest 3 is even better um we have more high-res color cameras on board you know two four megapixel color cameras um it was designed to have a much clearer uh, mixed reality experience. We learned a lot from the Quest Pro and how people reacted to that uh, and how we built that. It's a slicker form factor. It looks great. The meta reality yep. is there and I think that's an important feature. What are they going to get for this extra processing power? You put it on your head and you look at a title that you've already been playing. You know, what? Yeah, yeah. Pop One, for example. Put it on your head and suddenly just the screens right away are going to be better. That's right. It's it, And it's just, it's clearer, it's crisper, lines don't jag. No more jaggies. So as expected, that would mean a higher render resolution natively in the headset and potentially power for better aliasing, which is going to make a huge difference. Everything just looks better. Then there's somewhere in the order of two to two and a half times as much power-ish kind of thing from the old days. Phenomenal. And so someone like Pop1 says, oh, we have all this level of detail stuff we do where in the distance things tend to get blockier, things tend to disappear. We're going to just push that out. That's so right. now all of a sudden the world looks more full. And they say, you know, we now have all this memory that we can throw our textures in, mm -hmm. make them a little higher res when you're closer to them. Uh, you know, maybe have more things going on, whatever. We have all this extra processor. Let's let's add some particles that are a little bit more interesting. And so just yeah. overall, it's a big step up for developers that take the time. You automatically get the screens, but the developers that take the time to go do relatively easy things based on their optimizations. Next, we have Jason saying regarding textures, we now have all all this memory, which could be referring to VRAM or also RAM. Textures affects RAM usage too. So I'm really hoping 12 gigabyte RAM is a thing for Quest 3. We'll get even better looks. And then those that are building for this device, you yeah. know, Asgard's Wrath, for example, which just got announced, they really take advantage of it from the beginning. And it, 
The beauty of all of our devices is no cable. That's so right. is it a PC? No, it's not a PC. Or it's getting so good yeah. and it doesn't have the cable. That that really to me is the best of both worlds, right? And it's the best we totally. can do today. Speaking of Asgard's Wrath, here's the creative director, Matt Kramer, speaking about his experiences with a new headset. In terms of Quest 3, the feeling of the headset is superb. I've been using this for a couple months now. Oh, it's the form <laughs> factor is primo. It is. Oh, really? The other thing is. is resolution and horsepower on this thing is phenomenal. Oh, so it will even look better on Quest 3. Crazy. It's shaping up to be just about everything we'd like it to be. So back to Boz's podcast. And of course with Airlink, you're still, you know, for the PC gamers out there, totally. you're still gonna be fully taking advantage of the headset's capability. The screens are really gonna pop for those uh, consumers as well, going over the Airlink capabilities. And of course, if you want to be using USB-C 3 cable, you can be. Still pushing PC VR with Airlink, which is good that it's not been completely dismissed. Additionally, Boz uses the phrase, screens are gonna pop. Pop for me is colors, not crispness or clarity. So I highly doubt we're seeing mini LED like Quest Pro, but potentially improved color of the LCD displays. Let me know your thoughts below. Also, USB-C is being used for Link again. No display part, I'm afraid. But we are banking on the AV1 codec being used to improve Airlink with way less compression. Actually, Kind of one of the things that I do think is, is easy to overlook, you talked about uh, the more power. A lot of the more power that we're talking about uh, is coming from this improved chipset, but it's not the only place that we're getting more power. We've also done some really clever things with how we manage the thermals in this device. Um, I won't get into it in this podcast. We'll try to get maybe the right engineering team back for a future podcast. Uh, some of the coolest engineering work done in this headset. You'll never see it. Uh, it's how we managed the heat because that is the real blocker for these these uh, headsets. And uh, for example, there's a little pinstripe running around the face plate. If you look at the front, that's actually the vent. And we're pushing air out of that little pinstripe all the way around the headset. It's a very clever way of merging design and functionality. Improved thermal management. It sounds like it's beyond Quest Pro, which apparently was a huge breakthrough in heat management itself. So this means less CPU throttling, unlike Quest 2, which was fairly severely throttled until the next update. That is, if you didn't know, here's Boz with more. Uh, people are always asking, in the AMAs about Quest 3. We will share more information on Quest 3, of course, uh, as we get out uh, towards Connect on September 27th. What about Quest 2? A lot of dedicated Quest 2 users out there, loyal Quest 2 users. Uh, it's a phenomenally popular headset still, even running in you know this many years on, it continues to be a great performer, great seller, people with a very engaged audience. Uh, as I have hinted a few times on Twitter in my AMAs, we are gonna keep Quest 2 in market for a while yet longer. In fact, we're going to improve it. Uh, so we have just announced that we're gonna have higher clock speed for all of Quest 2, including existing headsets, and for Quest Pro headsets. That update's coming um, soon, and we're dropping the price back to 299 for 120 gigabytes, 349 for 256 gigabytes, starting on June 4th. Um, the, the, the CPU, GPU headroom improvements um, are actually you know, much foretold by John Carmack. We're just us finally having a long enough look at the realistic workload of these devices to make some pretty tricky low level systems optimizations to unlock that extra power. So that's something that people who have existing headsets, they're getting better. You don't have to do anything but update the headset. headset um, and those are gonna still be available for sale for a bit longer. So here again, you see the point of all this, it has been from day one, ever since we introduced the Quest One, to create a cohesive ecosystem where consumers are rewarded for their participation with, a, with devices that keep getting better, with libraries that keep getting richer, uh, with more and more content, um, and developers who are getting met with ever a growing user base, uh, highly active, uh, eager to, to spend money for great work, for great titles. Uh, and that is the thing that we have been nurturing and growing all these years, uh, and I'm quite so successfully. So not long after this podcast, Jason Rubin changes his Twitter profile picture. Here he is wearing the Quest 3, but wait, that strap looks a little different. This looks to be the first showing of the Quest 3's Elite strap, so we know it exists, but this is all we have right now, so we'll have to wait for more. You can also see he's wearing glasses, so all you glasses users can breathe a sigh of relief as it seems to confirm they'll fit comfortably in the facial interface. We also had Elite teasing a subscription service for Quest games called MetaQuest Plus. Again, these are all the details we have right now, but is this any two titles or is it two titles they choose? Is that a good price? It's interesting, but nothing is confirmed. Again, let me know your thoughts below. And as usual, like this video to help me out with the algorithm and subscribe for all the latest in the XR space. I've been DSAX and I'll see you on the other side.